I think they've learned not to rely on the government for anything after Donald Trump nearly got shot thanks to the uh, failings of the uh, US government. Um, Trump has been President James and Rita for only a handful of days. Uh, wait for it. The stock market has already hit a record high. Bitcoin hit a record high. Uh, migrant caravans at the uh, border have been dissolved. Don't get President elect, elect true. Elect. Hamas has, has called for an end to the war. Really, Bitcoin has a said record high. Putin ready to end the Ukraine war. Qatar, we'll talk about this. Reader and James has kicked out the Hamas leaders. Whoops, get rid of them. Uh, EU will now buy US gas, not Russian gas. Putin will sell oil in US dollars. Zelensky has phoned Trump and Elon. Whoops, hello, mate. Yep. New York mayor ends his vouchers for illegals. Mexico to stop migrants at the US border. China wants to work peacefully with the US and big. US companies are uh, big US companies moving out of China. Um, it's big stuff, Rita. I mean, he's already just the thought of the Trump 2.0 of the next four years has got the world moving in the right direction. Well, this is part of the uh, mandate. This is what the American people voted for. They don't want any more uh, involvement in foreign wars. It's a, it's mm. a big issue over there. And he managed to do that in his first term, as uh, despite all the obstruction he faced from the bureaucracy, the swamp, uh, just through strength, and that's what he does. He does diplomacy through strength. So the Iran example, he completely isolated and impoverished the Iranian regime because he went to the likes of China and said, if you buy their oil, I'm slapping a big tariff on everything that you sell. Yeah. into America. So guess what the Chinese did? The Chinese Communist Party behaved. <laughs> when Biden came in, uh, the Iranian regime was emboldened, it was enriched, and uh, they made sure their proxies acted accordingly. It had Hamas, Hezbollah, they, they, they have wreaked havoc in the Middle East in those few short years. And now with Trump coming back, all of that is going to change. Everybody knows that. Everyone knows where he stands on pretty much every issue. I keep hearing, and even from Australian media that should know better, there's so much uncertainty. You don't oh, know what nonsense. he's going to... You, <laughs> you know where he stands agenda. on every single exactly. issue. Yes. He spells it out. You just have to listen. James, uh, I know you've uh, missed the Australian media while you've been away, but uh, this just oh, uh, bad. tickled me pink, this one. Um, uh, this, I, think, uh, I, think, I think missed, missed is, is no example of the word. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, uh, James, I love this story here that uh, I just love the understatement in it, that Trump's victory will be a test for Penny Wong's diplomatic skills. <laughs> just tell she us. Has any? <laughs> exactly. Other than just writing. I think that's yeah. putting, yeah. putting it well, mildly. I think it, you take it away, James. That, well, that is putting it mildly, but I mean, you know, what we've seen here is on a foreign policy level, we have seen a final rebuke to what can basically be called Obamaism, the Obama style f foreign policy, which Joe Biden continued through his term of his administration. And this is this idea that, you know, America doesn't really have interests, uh, and if America does have interests, they're probably shameful. We should, you know, elevate and talk to our enemies. Um, that, uh, you know, this is sort of like enlightened people can all get together and work things out between themselves. And it's a completely unrealistic sort of way to look at the world because, of course, this emboldened Iran under the Obama administration. It really emboldened Iran under the Biden administration. And there is a very direct link to that foreign policy and the horrors of October 7th because, of course, Absolutely. You know, Iran was enriched to the tunes of hundreds of billions of dollars. Now, already before Donald Trump comes into office, we've had in recent weeks Israel, you know, take massive steps to downgrade Iran's ability both, you know, within Iran and through its proxies to threaten the Middle East. But now I think Iran is going to be in a position very soon where it's going to have to sue for peace who wants to survive as a regime. Uh, but, you know, really all we can hope for is that, you know, we see the Iranian people liberated from this horrendous theocracy that they've been laboring under since 1979.